Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel for those who want to learn and get better at board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm going to teach you and give you tips for Pandemic. Now, Pandemic has become the reference game of cooperative games. Today, I'm going to teach you with this beautiful 10th anniversary edition on loan from our friend Gavin. What I love the most about Pandemic is how it starts really relaxed and chilled. And before you know it, everyone is freaking out and scrambling to beat the game. If you're new to the channel, subscribe now. In Pandemic, you play a skilled member of a disease-fighting team who all together must cure four diseases before they overcome humanity. To do this, you will travel the world treating the disease, building research stations and collecting knowledge to find the cure for these deadly diseases. Once you've cured or eradicated all four diseases, you win the game. There are three ways to lose the game. You reach eight outbreaks. If you need to place more cubes of one disease on the board, but you've already placed them all. If you need to draw more player cards, but the deck is already empty. In other words, winning the game is a lot harder than it first appears. This 10th anniversary edition of Pandemic comes in a really cool first aid kit box, where usually the characters come as pawns, now they are minis. But most of the other components are the same. Let's have a look at how to set up the game. We have a really nice map of the world where each of the cities are split in four colours, each representing the four diseases. All players start in Atlanta because that's where the Centre for Disease Control is. You place a research station there. All the remaining research stations, you put them on the side. We then place the infection cards here and the infection rate marker on the two here. That tells us how many infection cards we draw per turn. Place the four cure markers here. Once the disease is cured, you move it here, and if it is eradicated, it's flipped like this. Then we need to place the first 18 infections. We start by drawing three cards, and we will put three cubes in each of these cities. So we'll put three in Lagos, three in Montreal, and three in Hong Kong. Then we draw another three cards, but this time we are going to put two cubes. So that will be two in Madrid, two in Santiago, and two in Algiers. Then we do that once again, and this time we basically uh, put one cube. So that's one in Buenos Aires, and one in Washington, and one in Tokyo. Now we should have 18 cubes on the map. Then we place the nine cards face up and this will form the infection card discard pile here. Place the remaining disease cubes next to the board. If you need to place more cubes of one disease on the board but you've already placed them all, you will lose the game. Then we set up the player cards. Start by giving four cards for a two-player game, three for three, and two cards for a four-player game. Once that's done, we can start building the player deck. You split the deck depending on how many epidemic cards you want to use. It's four for beginners, five for standard, and six if you're feeling heroic. Here we will start with four and split the deck in four equal parts. We will place one epidemic card in each pile and we will put the other two remaining back in the box. Then we shuffle each pile and we place it face down and stack them one on top of each other until we have one final player deck here. Finally, the game says to pick the characters randomly, but we sometimes let the players pick the characters they want. We start by looking at the medic. The medic can, as one action, Remove not just one cube, but all cubes in a city when treating a disease. In addition, once the disease is cured, he automatically removes cubes and stops new infections just by being in the city. This doesn't even count as an action. 
The quarantine specialist prevents infections. No new cubes can be placed in the city she's in. So say in the infection phase, we get Hong Kong, we won't put any cubes in Hong Kong. It also protects all the cities that it's connected to. So in this case, there are six cities that are connected and it protects them. The scientist needs only four city cards of the same color to cure the disease of that color. All other players need five. Like other players, she still needs to be in a research station to discover the cure. This is the dispatcher. The dispatcher can move another player's pawn as if it was himself, if the other player agrees. So say, for example, it could take the scientist here and he can also move any player to a city containing another pawn. So say the quarantine specialist could come straight to the scientist on the dispatcher's turn. Or say the dispatcher had the card for Bogota and they wanted to send well, the scientist to Bogota, I could fly direct. Essentially, he dispatches the other players around the world. This is the researcher. The researcher can give one card from her hand per action without being in the corresponding city. So it could very well give the scientist, Bogota and Khartoum for two actions. In the same way, during other players' turns, they can take cards from her. So the scientist could take cards from the researcher if they're in the same city. The operations expert can build a research station as an action without discarding the matching city card. In this case, you don't need the Tehran card, just builds the research station. Also, once per turn, he can also move from a research center to any city by discarding any city card. So he just needs to drop that and we'll go to Algiers. The contingency planner may as an action take an event card from anywhere in the player discard pile here and place it on his roll card. So we are going to take this one and place it. It doesn't count against his seven card hand limit, but is taken out of the game once played. Now we can start playing the game. Players will look at their city cards and the one with the highest population starts the game. At their turn, players will play four actions then draw two player cards and then infect the cities. Let's have a look at the actions. There are eight possible actions and they're all on this card. At, the, at their turn, players can choose to do any number of them as many times as long as it doesn't exceed four action. Now, let's look at them in detail, starting with the four movement actions here. The drive and ferry action lets you move to a city connected by a line where you're currently in. So this one could come here. The direct flight is if you have that city card in your hand, you can discard it to fly there. So this one could go straight to Algiers and use that card. You discard it. The charter flight, if you have the city card you are in right now, you can discard it to fly anywhere. So you could discard Sao Paulo and say go to Montreal. Now the shuttle flight lets you move from a research station to any other research station. So this one could come to Madrid. Then we have four science actions. When you build a research station, you discard the city card you're in to build a research station. So in this case, I would give up Ho Chi Minh City and we would place the marker there. You treat the disease by removing one cube from the city you're in for one action. If it's already cured, you will remove all the cubes of that color as one action. Now, you share knowledge when a player is in the same city as another player. You can either give or take the corresponding city card. So in this case, we could give Riyadh to the other player. We discover a cure at any research station. You simply discard five city cards of the same color to cure that disease. So in this case, it's the blue. So we've cured the blue disease. Once the player has played the four actions, you draw two cards from the player deck. Now, if you run out of cards from the player deck, you've lost the game. There are three types of cards. You have city cards, you have event cards, and you have epidemic cards. Now, with the city cards, they come in four colors, one for each disease. There's also five event cards. They can be played at any time and don't count as an action. They give special powers like skipping the next infect city step or move a pawn to another player's pawn, rearrange the top six cards of the infection deck or remove one card from the infection discard pile forever 
And finally, it lets you add a research station to any city without a card. The event cards can be played at any time, but not in between drawing a card and resolving it. So for example, we've drawn Legos during the infection phase. We cannot use airlift to bring the quarantine specialist to Legos before it is infected. You need to resolve the card first. And finally, we have the dreaded epidemic cards. If one of the cards you've drawn from the player deck is an epidemic, you have to resolve its three steps immediately. First, you increase the infection rate like this. So from now on, you will draw three cards instead of two in this case. Then you're going to infect a new city by drawing the bottom card on the infection pile and adding three cubes to that city. So in this case, Moscow is going to get three cubes. Finally, you intensify the infection by reshuffling the discard card pile. Not all the cards, just the discard pile, including the one you just took from the bottom and you stack them on top of the deck. Of course, you still need to draw the required infection cards. It doesn't happen very often, but if you draw two epidemic cards together, you will have to resolve them the three steps twice in a row. Now, there's another bad thing that happens more often, and that is the outbreak. Let's say we have to draw two infection cards, and the first one we draw is Lima. If a city with three cubes gets infected with a fourth cube of the same color, instead of adding the fourth cube to that city, we add a cube of that color to every city connected to it. So we'll add one cube in Santiago, in Bogota, and in Mexico City. Now, we also raise the outbreak meter by one. Now, the second card is Mexico City. We're really not lucky. So here, again, it triggers an outbreak. So we raise the marker one more step, and we put a cube in every city it's connected to. So one in Miami, in Bogota, in Chicago, in Los Angeles. Now notice here there are four cubes, but only three of the same color. So it does not trigger an outbreak. Now in Lima, it does trigger an outbreak. A city can only outbreak once per infection card, but more than once per turn. So again, we would raise the marker one more step and we would place a cube in Santiago, in Bogota, and not in Mexico City because that's where the outbreak started. Now let's look at one full player's turn. As his first action, the dispatcher is using his special ability and brings the researcher to himself. Now, as a second action, he will use the researcher's ability and take a card from her. Now he has eight cards. That means we need to discard to seven immediately. So we're going to get rid of San Francisco. As a third action, he decides to build a research station using the Khartoum city card. So he is in Khartoum. We put the research station and we discard the city card. Finally, his fourth action is to give his five red cards. We move the cure marker, a pretty good action phase. Now the dispatcher picks two player cards to add to his hand, and if there's no epidemic, we put them here. Then he will infect two cities with infection cards, and that's the end of the dispatcher's turn. Once a player is done infecting cities, the player on the left goes next. My tips to win a pandemic are, first, make sure you discuss freely with one another. This is a cooperative game, so share ideas and agree on moves together. Also, coordinate your actions to ensure that your characters' abilities work together. Be single-minded about curing diseases as quickly as possible. Eradicating early on can help a lot, but the focus should be on curing the diseases. Bad things are going to happen, and they are going to happen fast. It's a safe bet to plan for the worst. Taking chances will most probably lead to losing the game. Some abilities look better or more powerful than others, but in reality, they are all very strong. Make full use of them. Really start the setup with the introductory four epidemic cards. It's plenty. And don't jump to six epidemics. Ease into it with five of the standard game. And when you're ready for six, go for the six epidemics. It's brutal. As soon as the players have cured the four diseases, they win the game and the game stops immediately. 
That's how you play Pandemic. It's a great cooperative game that isn't easy to win and will get you trying over and over again. It will last around an hour, especially at the beginning, because you'll lose a few games. But as soon as you start winning, you'll want to try harder levels. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe or leave in the comments a game you'd like us to teach. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.